Hi everyone, I'm Sean, and welcome back to The 101. So last week we started our conversation about malware by breaking down its major types. So these distinctions are important because they help guide our overall strategy, how we prioritize our time, our money, and our resources to best protect ourselves against malware. But when it comes to tactics, we need to have a better understanding of how malware works so we know how to defend ourselves. In order to do that, we have to ask, how does malware actually work? Okay, so let me call myself out here for just a moment. I know there are lots of different types of malware, and each one is unique. And as we talked about last week, talking about malware as a whole can be confusing and distracting. But here's the thing. Most types of malware follow a basic pattern in order to be successful. Malware, no matter what type, generally operates in three phases. First, it infects an endpoint by tricking the user or system to run it. Second, it installs itself and then keeps itself from getting uninstalled. And third, it fulfills its goals by following the programmatic commands it's given. So remember that traditional defenses work by cataloging known bad files and checking all new ones against them. This blacklist approach is a losing battle. Instead, we need to focus on the tactics of malware, how it works and what it does, in order to be more successful at stopping it or spotting it if it's in our environment. Okay, let's quickly cover each phase so we can get a better idea about how malware does what it does. All right, so the first phase, infection, talks about how malware gets to the target and how it gets started. What's important to note here is that in most cases when an organization is the target, malware needs some form of human interaction to get started. That means someone needs to click a link or open an attachment or do something to get malware running. So when research shows that email phishing is overwhelmingly the choice that attackers use to get malware in the hands of unsuspecting victims, we have some good news. Proper IT hygiene with an emphasis on patching systems regularly, coupled with end user training, goes a long way at keeping malware out of our environment. Installation is the pivotal stage. Okay, they're all pivotal stages, but in this one, malware actually runs, and if it's successful, it gains a foothold to pursue its malicious endeavors. The other aspect of this phase is persistence, how malware sticks around despite your best efforts to remove it. Often, malware roots itself deep in the registry to ensure that its processes start every time the endpoint does. In some cases, it tampers with the defenses itself to make sure that it can continue to run unchecked. It can do this directly by killing essential processes, or indirectly, by tricking AV into thinking it's a good file. Okay, in the execution phase, malware does what it's programmed to do. This is very type specific. Every type of malware has a different objective at hand. However, almost all types of modern malware share a common aspect in the execution phase. They establish a remote connection back to home base. Now they do this for lots of different reasons, sending stolen data, allowing remote access, whatever the case, they're establishing a direct outbound connection to the attackers so the attack can continue into the future. Knowing this gives us a huge advantage because we can actually monitor outbound connections from our endpoints through network defenses like firewalls and web proxies. If we see it, then we can stop it and keep at least the endpoints on our network from giving up the keys to the kingdom. So what do we take from our episode today? Recognizing the common phases that all types of malware share gives us a much better way of focusing our defenses. It also gives us better perspective to know how to stop malware and how to find it if it got in. Remember, malware is a program following a very specific set of instructions. And if it can't because you patched that vulnerability it needed to exploit, or you plugged up that port it needed to communicate over, then it just doesn't work. Ultimately though, we need to realize that the traditional blacklist approach to stopping malware and keeping it out of our environment is just not working any longer. Instead, we need to focus on the tactics of malware, understanding how it behaves so we can look for that behavior in our environment. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching and tune in next week as we continue our discussion about malware. Of course, if you have questions, you wanna hear about them, you can reach us on Twitter at carbonblack underscore inc and use the hashtag the 101 or email us at the 101 at carbonblack.com. My name's Sean, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.